These Marzocchi Z1 forks look very similar. However, there's a substantial difference. This one right here uses a coil spring. That one down there uses an air spring. Find out just how different these two forks are. We did a back-to-back -back test, taking both forks into the woods and making a bunch of on-trail fork swaps. The differences were more than I expected. I wanna give a big thanks to my friends over at Jensen USA who sponsored this video. Jensen's a leading online retailer of Fox and Marzocchi product here in the United States of America. I've got both of these Marzocchi Z1 forks linked in the YouTube description below. Anything you purchase from that link over at Jensen USA will also help support my content. It's a big part of how we make this all happen. So we're all on the same page. Both these forks are 29er forks. Both are 170 millimeters of travel. Both of them feature the same grip damper, the same rebound adjustment. Really the only difference is the spring. I also want to mention I bought both these forks personally because I needed forks and I thought these are great options. I don't think you can go wrong with either one, but there are places where I prefer one versus the other. Let's head out to the trails and find out just how different these two forks are. Let's send it. First test of the day, let's hit a few jumps. My suspicion is the air fork's gonna feel just ever so slightly better than the coil fork when it comes to some jumps. This line here has like a couple shark fins, then just four medium to larger size jumps in a row. See if we bottom out on the takeoff, see if we bottom out on the landings, and more importantly, we'll see if I can even make it through because it's been a hot minute since I last rode this line. All right, it's business time. See how this goes. Now these jumps are a pretty specific use case, but I think going overboard serves to be a great example of how the difference really stacks up. I also don't ride these jumps super often. I feel like crashing here would not be good, so I tend to not hit these jumps a whole lot. I feel like a rolling safety hazard down those. Didn't use much travel on the fork. Definitely didn't bottom out on the takeoffs. Definitely didn't bottom out on the landings. Since I'm not super familiar with these jumps, I did a whole bunch of runs through these just for this video. I also wanna mention, this Yeti SB160 had a Fox 38 Grip 2 factory series. Then I swapped over to the 36 mil stanch in Marzocchi Ooh. forks. And honestly, they were a pretty good fit for the bike. There we go, over clear. <laughs> and sure enough, with the air fork, I had the exact instance I didn't wanna have that would test which fork's better. Over clear. <laughs> Even though I overcleared that jump at like 35 miles an hour, I didn't bottom out. That's what the extra volume reducers do there. And that's the fourth. Go! Gave it a go. The Sieti SP160 came with the Fox 38 Grip 2 factory series. The creme de la creme, as the French would probably say more properly. This fork felt pretty good. It felt pretty equivalent. It's not as plush going through even the jumps as the 38. The 38 ends up so stiff, it doesn't bind up or anything, and it has a little better small bump sensitivity. But on the bigger hits, the stiffness was not an issue. This felt plenty. I didn't even come close to bottoming out, and I overcleared that last trick jump by quite a bit because I am too old for tricks. Those are for kids. To get a real feel, if these forks are gonna be different. Let's get ridiculous and make a trail side swap and try these jumps again with the coil fork. Oh, how I wish these forks were more visibly different from one another. I feel that by about the 10th time we're doing this today, it's gonna get a little bit old. Test is invalid, he's missing his black cap. Squish our O-ring. So that does feel a little bit softer. We got maximum preload. I'll run the damper, similar position. For reference, I'm 170 pounds. This is, I believe, a medium spring. Both these forks are at 170 mils of travel. This does feel a touch softer than the air fork. You can't really fine tune it anymore other than getting a firm spring and swapping that in and then starting it. No preload, but we don't got time for that. All right, let's uh, blindly send it and report back. Okay, that's quite a bit squishier. I'm uh, borderline a little nervous. All right, let's, let's go to the a little more damping. Okay, let's go to a bit more damping. That's probably too much damping. As soon as I put on the coil fork, it immediately felt softer at the initial portion of the stroke compared to the air fork. This made me nervous for hitting bigger jumps. Woo! Over clear! 
So wow, the uh, coil fork. I didn't bottom out, but I used a bit more travel than I did at the air fork. However, I felt it moving around a lot more than the air fork, which was not a positive thing. It's harder to predict what was gonna be happening. It didn't feel as solid pushing into things. And I'm running more low speed compression than I was with the air fork. So let's stay at it and try to adapt to it and then give a final conclusion on jumps. All right, let's go send. What I'm struggling to articulate here is that I can feel essentially the handlebars going up and down a lot more with the coil fork than they would at the air fork. This can be somewhat disconcerting and it's especially noticeable when on a hardtail, believe it or not. However, it's something you can adapt to and sure on one ride it's noticeable, but if you ride like that all the time, it's not that big of a deal. This local jump line is really cool. Big thanks to Transition Bikes for building this thing and maintaining it. I have a transition right now, Aspire, and I love it on these jumps and we'll film that again soon. But today we're riding the SB160 because I've been riding more, more recently. On to the suspension. The reason why you hit the play button on this video. While you're thinking of buttons, scroll down, hit that subscribe button too. You couldn't tell from my commentary that air fork was much more confidence inspiring than the coil fork. I try to not say confidence inspiring all that much because it's very cliche, but it's true. With the coil fork, I bottomed out. I don't know if I bottomed out on a takeoff. I definitely bottomed from over clearing this jump behind me a couple times. What was disconcerting about the coil fork is it was going through the travel really easily and much more often. The air fork has some volume reducers in it, which makes it more progressive. So even though it's still quite plush and sensitive at the top of the stroke, when you get up to here, you have a lot more bottoming resistance. So I felt like the harder I pushed into it, the more support it gave. And then if I had a mistake, an overclear, an accident, I still had a bit of extra travel in the reserve to help me out. Once you run out of travel and you're just hard stop on the hard stop, you're kind of at the end of your extra bonus control that suspension gives you. And on these jumps, I was noticing that. These were big jumps. If we set our bikes up for these big jumps, it would come at a complete compromise to how it rides on the trail. Speaking of trails, that's why we're all here. We're all mountain bikers. So let's go mountain biking. Let's go find a trail and let's repeat this test through some bumps, some roots, some rocks, and some chunk. Let's boogie. It's gonna be big in my back pocket. Is that a fork in your leg or are you just happy to see me? All right, let's go get to the trails. This is not comfortable. Woo, okay. Really committing to the bit there, Jeff. <laughs> If you guys are enjoying this video, please scroll on down, hit that red subscribe button, and then I'll be able to see you more often here on the YouTube. Z1 coil, you run one into Oh my gosh, traction is decent today. So the coil fork versus the air fork in this little section of flowy single track. You know what? The forks had a distinctly different feel. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I just spiked that little stump. That would have been a flat tire with any other tire. Holy heck. So I reset this O-ring before dropping in that time and I didn't quite bottom out, even though I probably should have. Oh, oh, oh. That's the exact reason why we have suspension on these bikes. If you had a rigid fork, it would absolutely deflect you and send you who knows where. But if you have a suspension fork, you have quite a bit more forgiveness. You have traction, you have forgiveness. And to a certain extent, forgiveness is just more traction. Let's swap on the air fork, and I don't want to repeat that, but let's repeat the rest of this section and see which one's the way to go. Step one, you remove the bushes from your head tube. Step two, insert the fork. Step three, pick your bearing up out of the dirt. Slide it on. Jam that in there. While the bike doesn't look quite as good, this is the air fork. You can tell because it's never bottomed out today. 
So let's see how it does in flowy, twisty, yummy single track. Run one on the air fork on the trail. Bibble cross. One thing I didn't mention is that while trail riding, a Fox 38 is a little bit more small bump compliant than the Air Marzocchi Z1. It is still a tad bit rougher riding than the coil sprung Marzocchi Z1, but that's a whole different discussion, 38 versus 36 mil stanch. At the end of the day, for trail riding, I don't notice a drastic difference between the two different stanchion sizes. So the coil fork versus the air fork and this little section of flowy single track. Well, I like to push into the trail. I like to jump, I like to wheelie, I like to corner, I like to do all the things. I did prefer the air fork. I like the way I can push into it and I can get in the air a little bit more easily. And I like how if I make a massive mistake, over clear something or hop to flat, I like how I have extra travel in the bank. That's a bit of a safety net. Above all that, the feeling of the front end being predictably at the same height, whereas this, it's so much more linear, it's easier to get it deeper into the travel, so it kind of rides a little bit lower. That can be nice sometimes. Other times, just that frequent changing of geometry is just kind of throwing me off a little bit. So between the two, there was a tad more traction with this, but the predictability and all that, I thought was actually higher with the air fork. Slight advantage coil and corners, slight advantage everywhere else, air fork. One spot where I'm really curious to compare these two forks is a really jumpy, flowy bit of trail where you're getting in the air a bunch, but you're also smashing through some roots. You have a combination of needing to pop, but also needing some forgiveness to hit the impact. So let's leave the air fork on, go ride that, and then swap to this and see how it does. Let's go. It was somewhat dry while we filmed all this. I do think a little bit of moisture on all these roots might change things to make the coil seem a bit more appetizing than the air version. go to these lengths to bring you YouTube. <laughs> In all seriousness, I was not expecting the differences between these two forks on trail to be as noticeable as they were. Granted, I'm happy with both of the forks, but wow, for a wheels on the ground riding style, the coil fork does make a lot of sense. But if you want to get airborne, the air fork has some advantages for that. Ah, sorry internet. First impressions, the coil moves a lot more. So my front end is getting higher, lower, higher, lower. Whereas at the air fork, it was just more in a smaller portion of the travel. So it was more consistent and the harder I pushed into it, the firmer it got and the higher into the air I went and then the happier I got. So you can draw a direct correlation between the huck and the air spring. Check out just how deep into the stroke this fork is cycling on these compressions. Granted, I can run more damping, but there's a certain point where you run so much damping that every time you pump into the bike, it feels like you're just pushing a wet blanket around and it absorbs a lot of your inputs. That's not ideal. Whoa. Whoa. Out of control. So I wanna add more. It's so balanced, for more wow. Support. But it starts working against me and I start slipping in the turns. When I was thinking about comparing coil forks versus air forks, this exact section of trail was the first thing that popped into my mind. And it's because those roots right there, somewhat off camber, can't really smoothly get over them. There's more roots you can't see above them. There's roots right here. And then as you get further down, you have more roots, more roots. And on top of those roots are even more roots. So air fork or coil fork? Well, yes, the coil fork is a little bit plusher through all these roots and it is a little bit better for wheels on the ground smashing through the roots. It's just softer, more supple, more responsive, keeps your front tire more planted. Now, there's a jumpy bit after this with like a bunch of little hops in a row, then a hook down a hillside. Man, the air fork was significantly more predictable and more stable through all of that. And I never even fully bottomed the air fork out. I might not have even bottomed the coil fork out, but the amount of distance that the air fork, the air fork just kind of hovers in the middle. The coil fork is warm all over the place. 
So I was running the air fork with like a quarter turn of damping, and I was running the coil fork with like a half turn of damping. So what ends up happening when you have that much damping turned up in your fork, you go to push into it to boost off something, and it soaks up a lot of your energy going into the bike. It also keeps it from cycling as much, so it gets more stable. When you have your spring doing that work for you and less damping, it's easier to get the bike to pop into the air, which to me is a much more playful, more fun feel for the bike. So this section of trail goes to show how each one has an advantage and a disadvantage. I enjoy the coil on the roots and I prefer the air when it's time to jump. Everyone else can make their own conclusions. I know which one I'd buy if I was buying one though. I've actually bought them both, but different reasons. <laughs> All right, here we go with the coil fork and one of the rootier bits. But there's a twist. Oh! An important factor that I never mentioned in this video is how well your frame plays to either type of front end suspension. The SB160 is quite a neutral bike and it works well with both different types of forks. That said, I've set it up to be pretty progressive, so I feel like it was a more balanced setup with that progressive air fork. If I'd removed all the volume reducers from the rear shock, I might have just had a more stuck to the ground front and rear feel, it might have been more balanced. Yikes. I'm not gonna say that was the fork's fault. I think I came in a little overzealous, but I got pretty out of control there. I was hoping to slow things down and yeah, more on me than the fork. We'll see if it happens with the other fork though. Before we wrap this all up, let's make one final swap, put the air fork on there and see how it does through all those crazy roots. So now we've got the air fork. Let's try out the Rudy to Huck section. Wouldn't have minded more time to get used to this. That feels nice. I can dig that. I can't help but wonder how much this might change should we get an inch of rain on top of all of those roots. I found it fascinating comparing the air to the coil and in a section like this where you have such a variety of elements going on, it's cool to see where each one excels. Truthfully, the coil fork does feel better when your wheels are on the ground and you're just kind of letting it go and you're not putting much input into the bike. The air fork feels better when you're pushing into the bike, and then when you're slapping down into the ground with a lot of force when you're jumping. So a simple like way to boil it down, wheels on the ground riding style, pounding through roots, hanging off the back for dear life, really steep trails. Coil fork feels a little better for that. If you're really active and pushing into your bike a lot, air fork is phenomenal. Does either one really give up a ton to the other? I think you could get used to either one. I like this coil fork. I do prefer the air fork in general but I can get used to this coil fork just fine, take it for a handful of rides and I adapt to it and I'm happy as a clam, fresh in the sea and the salt water. If I really had my druthers, what I'd probably do is put this fork on in about mid-October, November, and then right around May, put that fork on. So for the summer months, the drier, faster rolling months, bigger hitting, more jumps, I'd have the air fork, the extra support and ramp up. And for the more slippery, soft months, I'd have prime traction with the coil fork. So there we go. I have both these forks linked to in the description down below over at Jensen USA. Anything you purchase from those links, whether it's a fork, a volume reducer kit, chain lube, whatever it may be, that'll help support my channel. It's a big part of how we all make this happen. Huge thanks to Jensen. Huge thanks to all of you for watching this video and leaving me your thoughts down below. I appreciate it. Do you think I'm on or off base with this video? Which fork do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. I love reading through those. I learn quite a bit. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to Riley for filming and editing this video, and I'll see you guys in the comments. Peace, everyone.